Woo! Guava Splash. Don't even know what a guava is, but I like it. Anyways, what's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining us. If you're returning, thank you for coming back. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We're happy to have you here at Flannel Photos. Today, we're going to be going over something that I'm pretty excited about. First of all, because I love trucks. Second of all, because I love taking pictures. Truck photography. It seems like you really can't find a whole lot of topics on truck photography. It seems like the majority of it is taking pictures of sports cars and the sort. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and go through the process that I have found out works best for me through my trial and error and what can result in the best looking truck pictures that just really make your truck pop. And what we're going to do is we're going to be going into step by step how I did it. And trust me, this is more than turn your camera to the side, um, can it a little bit and then shoot, shoot away. So we're going to really try and make this look nice and we'll see how it turns out. All right. So the first thing I had to do when I was trying to figure out where to take my pictures is I went on Google Maps and I scouted out some locations. Um, between this, I had narrowed down to a couple of spots, and then by driving past the spots, I was able to get a good look at what the spots looked like in person because Google Maps is very difficult to get an actual idea of what it looks like. So I drove from location to location, and from that, I picked out what I believed to be the best um, spot to take these pictures for the truck. The final location that I ended up choosing for the truck was a one lane road that headed to an island. And what I really liked about this road is that it was very infrequently traveled. This means that I was able to set up the truck exactly how I wanted it. And I wasn't afraid that vehicles were gonna be passing by and trying to squeeze by that would cause me to have to move my truck in order for them to get by. So I picked a location where I was very easily able to do all my work without getting in other people's way, which is very important. You don't want to be causing a problem for other people. Um, that's a good way to, uh, to get in trouble, and I didn't want to do that. So I found this one-lane road, and this road, to me, sp sticks out quite a bit because there's water on both sides of it, and the road is maybe only less than a foot higher than the level of the water. So you can see the water very clearly on both sides, and then since the road is one lane as well, I saw it as something that drew your eye straight down the middle of the frame of the picture and right into the truck, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted the focus to be very clearly the truck and nothing else in the picture. So once I decided this location, I went there a couple for a couple days and I wasn't quite getting the pictures that I wanted. So going into the weekend, looking at the weather, I saw that it was going to snow. Now, initially, I wasn't very happy that that was going to snow. Um, typically, that makes things a little bit harder. But as I started to think about it more, the snow provided me a great opportunity to take pictures of the truck. With the truck being black and the snow being white, it pre created this very strong contrast that was able, in my mind, to make the truck pop out even more from the snow and you could very easily see the truck. Additionally, whenever it snows on different objects, the snow tends to bring out a lot more of the detail of the objects and make things more clearly defined, such as the rivets and the grooves in different things. In this case for the truck, it was able to showcase a lot of the, the different grooves in the truck and the, the lines in the truck that I believe make it um, stand out quite a bit more than a, a picture on a, on a sunny day where you wouldn't be able to see some of those fine details that the people of Ford put so much time and effort into making. So I decided to take full advantage of this weather, and especially with the light, since typically on snow days, it isn't very bright out. So I had a very extended period of time that allowed me to take pictures of the truck in great lighting. So once I get the truck set up, there's three pictures that I wanted to take. Typically for most people it would be two, but for me I took three in this instance and let me tell you why. With these three pictures I set the pictures at three different exposures. Now why I did this is because as you see here I exposed the picture for the entirety of the truck. 
I wanted the whole truck to be um, exposed and I wanted the camera to be focused on the truck getting all those fine details. For the second picture, I exposed for the headlights. And as you see here, the headlights here, I was able to have the low beams on along with the fog lights. Now the reason I had to take three pictures is because for F-150 trucks, you can't have the high beams on as well as the fog lights. So in order for me to get the full headlights with the high beams, the low beams, and the fog lights, I had to take two separate pictures. So here you see I took the pictures with the, the low beams and the fog lights. And in the third picture, I took for the whole entirety of the headlights, which was the low beams and the high beams on. And you see here that the fog lights are automatically turned off. So once I had these three pictures, I was able to start putting them together. Now it's very important to notice that the reason that these pictures will be able to line up so nicely is because I shot all of these on a tripod. Now whenever I took these three pictures, in between each picture, I had to make sure that I was very careful not to move the tripod any bit. Doing so would cause the frames to shift and it would be much more difficult later on when you were trying to match the, the headlights up. So now that we have our three pictures exactly how we want it, what we're going to do is we're going to start to select the pieces from each picture that we want to transpose onto our main one. So first we're going to do the upper set of headlights, both the high beams and the low beams. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our lasso tool here and we're just going to make our selection for these headlights. Now once we've done this, we're going to right click and we're going to select layer via cut. Now this will create a new layer that has only selected those headlights. Now we're going to do this additionally for the other set of headlights. And we're going to layer via cut. So now as you see we have both of our headlights selected and we're going to do the same thing with our fog lights. We're going to cut these out, layer via cut, and we're going to cut these out, layer via cut. Great. So we have our four additional layers, and now what we're going to do is we're going to move these layers onto our original picture that we want to transpose these onto. So we're going to right click on this picture, specifically the layer, and we're going to click duplicate layer. Now I'm going to label this one top right, and we're going to move it straight over to our original image, which is, we see here, 8798. So we're going to match this up, 8798, and we're going to send the top right to over there. We're going to do the same thing here, where we want to duplicate the layer. This is going to be the top left, and it's still going to 8798. Now we're going to do the same thing with these two as well. And this one we're going to say is the, the bottom right, which would make this one the bottom left, 8798. Great. So now as you see here, we have our four layers as well as our background, and we can deselect these layers as we wish. And as you see, when we have these selected, they match up pretty well with the truck. And once we fine tune this more, we'll be able to move them around and make sure that they line up exactly how we want it in the case that your tripod did shift while shooting these pictures. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, start to erase this excess from the other pictures that we don't want on this one. So personal preference that I like to make that I believe makes it easier is I like to deselect the truck this allows us to see very closely exactly what we want. So I can also zoom in here and now we see this is the truck headlights. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to erase this. So we are going to select our eraser tool and we're going to make sure that we have selected the correct layer that we're going to be erasing. Otherwise, it won't do, be doing anything. So here we have our top left headlight. We're going to select top left headlight and we're going to start to erase. We can make the selection size a little bit bigger since we're not working very fine tune here. And we're just going to erase away the excess. We're just going to erase around the edges. When you're doing this erasing, I suggest that you lift your finger from the uh, mouse every now and then. Otherwise, if you were to make a mistake when you try and um, control Z to undo that mistake, it will undo all of the progress you've made. So I like to do it in chunks, and this allows me to prevent myself from having to do over things um, needlessly. So we're going to continue to erase this. And once we start to get a little bit closer to it, we're going to move to a finer tool. And now here, as you see, once we've finished getting rid of all that excess stuff that we don't want from the other pictures, what we're able to do is we're able to free transform, which is under the edit tab, and we can select free transform while each individual layer is selected. And we can move this up so it will match right up with where the light should be. And then we can scroll over, and we see this one's a little low as well. So we're gonna select our bottom right, and we're gonna go to edit, free transform and we can just pick that right up and put it right where it belongs. Right. So now that we've gotten this far as we see here we have all of our lights on and now what we're going to do is we're going to start to clean up the rest of the picture and get rid of some of the other stuff that we don't want. So one thing that I don't like very much about this picture is the power lines in the back. And we can see these power lines are just sticking in the back and they're, they're just protruding from the top of the truck and it doesn't look very nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this and the first thing we're going to use is clone stamping. Um, so we're going to zoom in here. We're going to figure out exactly what we want to get rid of. So we're going to start off simple. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and then the hardness and we're going to select an area that we want to clone stamp. I'm going to zoom out just a bit and say we want to clone stamp this area right here. So we click Alt and then click it and then as we move, first we have to make sure we select the right layer and then as we move it will get rid of this line. Just like that. We can do the same throughout all these power lines. We're just going to erase these, get rid of them. We don't want them anymore. Just like magic. And essentially what we're doing is we're selecting an area that we want to sample the color from and it will clone whatever we have selected. As you see, the higher little cross, what that is, is that is telling us exactly where it is cloning from. So we're able to select certain areas that we want and we'll know exactly what the outcome should look like. And we can continue to do this all the way up for all of the power lines, including the telephone pole. So once we have a good amount of this, 
what we also have decided we don't like is this lower portion of the power lines. However, it's difficult to get rid of those with the clone stamping tool and still have the trees look normal. So what we're going to use for this part is we're going to use what we call the spot healing brush. So with the spot healing brush, what we're able to do is highlight these portions of the lines and it will erase those while still leaving a little bit of the trees in the area. And that way it won't look like you just cut off a straight line straight through a tree. And here what we can do for this big telephone pole area is we can just move this down and as you see it gets rid of it. And then we can kind of just click and dab throughout this area and by doing so it will get rid of this telephone pole and it won't make it look super obvious. Once we get to here we can do the same thing with this final telephone line. We'll just get rid of that and we'll make sure that the trees have some continuity in them in the sense that they still look continuous and they don't look like they've been cut off. Alright, so now we can zoom out again and we see that we got rid of those lines pretty nicely. The trees still look pretty good and we have our, our picture. Um, I'll, I'll leave things such as these poles. I think they add to the picture personally and here we have it. So another thing you can do if you really like to is you can get rid of stuff like this down here in the bottom of the of the picture. So if we were to make this a little bit bigger and we see under here this doesn't look very even we don't really like it so if we decide that we want to get rid of it what we can do is we can oh, I'm gonna have to select my uh, clone stamping tool I can select the area that we want to clone and we can move along through here and just get rid of that excess. All right, so now that that's gone, we can zoom back out one final time and see how the picture looks. So we like how it looks. Now once we go through these pictures, what we can additionally do is we can export these and pull them into Lightroom. Once we pull it into Lightroom, we can change the settings however we want. Personally, with all the snow, one of the settings that I really wanted to focus on here was the texture. I boosted that texture up through the roof much more than I would normally on a picture and that's because I wanted a lot of that snow and the ice that's just dripping and sticking to the truck I wanted that to really pop so what I did is I just slid that texture bar right over and made it look a little bit more punchy and for me this is the the desired result that I get the tread in doing so just makes it look like this really aggressive tread on the truck and it just looks like like it could really take whatever your life could throw at it which for me that was one of my goals when I always think of trucks I always think of them in construction areas you know doing heavy work and heavy lifting so I really wanted to make it look like it was just out there surviving in the elements and that's what I believe this effect can really achieve for it. If you learned something today, please drop a like below, smash that like button. If you didn't learn what you wanted to learn by watching this video, then please drop a comment and let me know what I could have done better. I'm always looking to improve. And additionally, if you're looking forward and you would like to see more videos like this in the future, then please subscribe and turn on the post notifications so you'll be notified whenever I post another video um, and hope, hopefully I can help you in the future as well. 
Thank you again for watching, and as always, have a good one. Beat Navy.